Support for Sports Page is provided by First Central Bank. Full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. By the University Store. The University Store is the official headquarters for Mules and Jenny's Emblem Clothing, Gifts, and UCM Memorabilia. Books, office supplies, art supplies, and more are available at the University Store, located on the lower floor of the Elliott Union on the UCM campus in Warrensburg. By Parker Supermarket and Pharmacy, a home-owned and operated store that listens to its customers. Whether it's a hypoallergenic formula or a new exotic vegetable, Parker strives to serve the unique needs of the area. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics. And a very big thank you to Mrs. Runke and Mrs. Bond's first grade class at Ridgeview Elementary in Warrensburg for that wonderful introduction to this week's edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page. We've got a great show lined up for you this week as Mules football coach Jim Sabota will join us to talk about last Saturday's win at Lincoln and this week's contest in St. Charles against the 7-2 Lindenwood Lions. Jenny Soccer claimed their fourth MIAA title in the last five years last Saturday, and Coach Louis Theobald will be in studio to talk about his 17-1 squad as they get set for the postseason. In our Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlights, we'll get to know one of the unsung heroes on the offensive line for Mules football, and we'll head back out to Ridgeview Elementary School in Warrensburg to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the UCM Literacy Team. So stay tuned. Your weekly one-hour look at UCM Mules and Jenny Sports is next. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for watching the University of Central Missouri Sports Page. I'm your host, Sean Jones, and joining me to kick off the show, as always in the fall, is Mules football coach Jim Sabota. Coach Sabota, welcome Hi, back. Hi, Sean. Well, good bounce back week for Mules football. I think the greatest thing, A, you got the win, B, you played well in all three phases. We did, and uh, it was it's a challenge. It's a same-day trip, and... Um, you know, there, there wasn't a big crowd there, and, and so uh, coming off a, a tough loss, proud of the kids. Uh, you know, it's easy to kind of get in a funk, and, and, you know, Lincoln hadn't been playing particularly well and so forth, so we just wanted to focus on our own execution and, and uh, have a great game. A lot of positives in the game. What pleased you the most from the 49-6 to win? Well, we kept them out of the end zone, uh, you know, and as you mentioned, we played well in all three phases, not a lot of, uh, you know, negatives there. Uh, I was proud of our offensive line and uh, Coach McClung, our offensive line coach, they came out in a completely different front and that it, uh, some of it was expected. We expected the unexpected, but uh, to do that on the fly and then have 300 yards rushing, I think was uh, pretty impressive. One of the things that was impressive from the press box was the opportunity to see a lot of young mules making winning plays. When we see these highlights in a few moments, we're going to see an awful lot of freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and sophomores making big plays. Again, we had one of those games where we had uh, the first uh, whatever as a mule, mm -hmm. and uh, it's always exciting to see that. 300 rushing yards in the game. That's another positive. You mentioned the offensive line. They played very well, but, but how about giving some credit? LeVance Taylor, Cameron Tornaden, and even Corey Washington, when he got his opportunity, I thought all three guys really ran the ball with purpose. Yeah, young guys, and uh, you know those are guys that are explosive and uh, really uh, catch the wall, ball well out of the backfield and really uh, well-rounded backs. Well, let's look at the highlights. It's the Mules and it's Lincoln at Dwight T. Reed Stadium in the capital city of Jefferson City last Saturday. The Mules and Lincoln renewing their MIAA rivalry with Lincoln back in the conference. First conference matchup between these two schools since 1989. And Lincoln wins the toss. They elect to receive. And to give them credit, they came out and put together a solid first drive. It did. It took about five minutes off the clock. And, uh, you know, we stiffened up when they got in the red zone, which was good. Lincoln, of course, coached by Mike the Tackle Jones, former Mizzou great and St. Louis Ram hero of Super Bowl 34. There you see your defense swarming up to the football. And I think as we watch this drive unfold, and it will culminate in a field goal that we'll see here in just a couple moments, 
That's the biggest thing. Your team leads the league in red zone defense, and for whatever reason, your guys find a way to take it up a notch and you hold them to a field goal there. Well, that's a really good sign, and you know, of course, you know, you'd like to go three and out, but if uh, you don't, keep them out of the end zone. Young guy here, Ralph Watson. How about these moves up the field? Great special teams. All the way around, a uh, good day for the special teams. Yeah, it sets up the short field for the Mules, and uh, there you see a nice sliding catch by Jamar Howard as the Mules are on the move. So you get down three to nothing, and yeah, no one really expected you to fall behind in the game, but it's three to nothing. And then how about that great pass from Corwin to Cannon? Took you exactly one minute and three seconds to answer. I thought that set the tone for the game. Yeah, we've we've done that a few times, and that's uh, those are good signs too when you answer uh, another team's score. How about that open field tackle by the All American? and Marlon Douglas. Marlon played a solid game, had good returns too. Yeah, he was all over the field. We're going to see one right here. Watch the patience in this punt return. Yeah, he's got terrific speed and he can use it, but watch him wait on his blocks, let the play happen, and gets a terrific return. One of the best in the country at returning punts. Yes, and he's uh, he hasn't taken one to the house yet, and, and we still expect him to do that. Tommy hanging in there, took the hit, delivered the pass, another great catch by Jamar Howard and the Mules are on top at this point 14 to 3 uh, in the first quarter. We'll move to the second quarter now. There you see Lincoln come down and Earlywine kicks the field goal. Those will be the final points the Tigers score on the day. There's a pass that got away from Corwin a little bit, under threw it, an interception, gives the ball back to Lincoln, but once again, your defense responded. They did, and I felt bad for Tommy. He came out of his hand bad and just kind of hung up there and the kid made a good play on it. One of your seniors, Darian Salter, you were backed up, uh, giving you some yardage, and then great run here by Cameron Tornado. Yeah, he kind of weaved his way through there, and the offensive line gave him just enough crack, and he's kind of a hard guy to find sometimes. If he wasn't tackled by his towel, he may have taken that one to the house, <laughs> but uh, great play there. Uh, both sides, and here we see uh, the freshman, LeVance Taylor. So much promise for this young man. He's got a lot of burst and catches the ball well and went the wrong way on that particular play, so that was one of the, the freshman deals, but uh, played a good game. A little extra counter there, though. It worked. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Popped into the end zone uh, for four yards out, and the Mules uh, comfortably ahead at this point. There you see Tommy uh, over the middle to the tight end, David Cannon, and he's fighting for some extra yardage. Uh, Cannon, of course, uh, had the tight end. He had, you're going to see a great block from David Cannon coming up here in a couple drives. But there, Tommy fought off uh, some pressure, threw it to the redshirt freshman, Anthony Kirkwood, who takes it 49 yards to the end zone. Yeah, That's a big drive at the end of the half. It was. It was, uh, in, you know, no huddle and uh, really called by, the, by Tommy out there. And uh, good to see AK with uh, some bursts there to score. Four plays, 80 yards, and a score to close out the half, 28-6. There you saw Coach Boda dialing things up. Look at the block from Cannon to free Taylor into the end zone. Great play. That's what makes those big plays, the extra effort downfield. Here we see the Mules defense. Got to get these guys in the highlights. So Saya Talfa with the tackle for loss gets it back to the Mules. There's LeVance watching left, right, left, right. I love seeing <laughs> Howard down the field trying to spring him with the block. Again, uh, we did uh, make some improvements in our downfield block. Good hitch and throw right in your living room. Great work by our students here at KMOS on the coverage there as Jamar Howard catches his second touchdown of the day. The Mules are cruising at this point, 42 to six. Uh, you look at the numbers, you dominated third down, you dominated fourth down, but it really goes back to something pretty simple. You dominated the line of scrimmage. We did, and it was good to see on both sides of the ball, and you have 300 yards rushing, you're usually gonna have a good day on offense. This was gonna be a rugby style punt, I believe, but Matt Jordan, hey, it was wide open. He had to take it, and he did. He did. I'm not sure he really wanted to. He's kind of looking him around at me at the sidelines, and uh, but he, it was there. I love seeing Corey Washington come in. We've talked about it on the radio network. When Corey Washington Washington gets an opportunity and comes in. He runs hard. He's a young man that's a freshman. He wants to climb up the ladder and play more. Corey's an outstanding player and he's very strong and, and he's got a bright future for us. Young man from out of California, of course, Coach Boda formed at UCLA using those connections. Strong victory for the Mules on the road. 18th straight against Lincoln. Mules win it by the final of 49 to six. Tommy Corwin throws five touchdown passes. Levance Taylor rushes for 119 yards. He rushes for a TD, he catches a TD, and the Mules uh, make it a winning season, guaranteed, as they improve to 6-3 and three overall, 5-3 and three in the MIAA. And once again, as we look at the MIAA standings coming up here in just a moment, Coach Boda, uh, that clear line of demarcation between the top five and the bottom five, there are some huge games 
this week in the MIAA. Pittsburgh State's going to host Washburn, who's one game behind them. Northwest, there you see they're one game out of first. They go to Missouri Western. The good news is you see Central Missouri there at five and then a pretty big drop off for the bottom five. Your team with two games left, a chance at the postseason, and uh, that's something to play for. It is, and uh, good to be in that position. And uh, we just want to take care of business this weekend and, um, and then wrap it up in a positive way. Well, this Saturday at 1.30, we're going to head to St. Charles, Missouri for football. This will be a first. We're taking on the Lindenwood Lions, a program that was an NAIA power. They were in the national title game two years ago in NAIA. Five trips to the NAIA playoffs under their current head coach, Patrick Ross. Beautiful facilities, big time commitment to football and all their sports. They're joining the MIAA next year. They're a D2 independent this year. All I have to look at is they're seven and two. They went to Northern Colorado and won. That's a Division I FCS win. They went to Kingsville, Texas and won. That might be even more impressive. That was the number two team in our region last year in the playoffs. This is a good football team. No question. And, uh, the, you know, as you mentioned, uh, have, have tremendous tradition there. Uh, they play well. You, you look at their stats and, and they, they find ways to win games. And so, uh, you know, we know that uh, you know, we're uh, up against an outstanding club and we've had a great week of practice and our kids have been focused. Well, motivation is something too that's unique in how teams approach it. You know, you look at Lindenwood, they're dubbing this one of the biggest, if not the biggest game in school history because they're joining the MIAA. This is the first big school, NCAA school, to come into Hunter Stadium to play. Uh, they're calling this a game that will will bring a rivalry to the forefront. You know, they think this could be a great rivalry and I think it could be with with the proximity in the Show Me State. They're going to be fired up for this. This is a team used to go into the postseason. They don't have the postseason this year. This is their postseason. Point being, we got to be ready to play. No question. Uh, I'm sure it's been a red letter game for them all year long. It's the only MIAA opponent they have. Uh, you know, they got a long winning streak at home, so they have all kinds of incentive and and uh, you know we know that uh, they're going to bring their A game. Well, let's talk about Lindenwood. None of us really know much about them. You've had a chance to at least see some film. What type of team are they? Why have they been so good? Well, I, they've had the same staff for a while, mm -hmm. so um, you know again they're really sound in what they do. Defense, uh, defensively, they base out of the four three and a what we call cover four or quarters coverage, but uh, they do uh, some, some variations out of it, have a nice blitz package, especially when you get to third down, and um, very solid on special teams. They've returned uh, multiple kicks for touchdowns this year. Uh, offensively, they, you know, they spread you out with uh, three and four receivers and uh, try to attack you with the run game that way, but they like to throw the ball. They're, they're a little bit more of a throwing game, but they have a sneaky good run game. Your program prides itself on solid special teams. I mean, your your kick coverage has been extraordinarily consistent in your two seasons as head coach. Your kick returns are solid. You know, you look at Douglas second in the league in punt returns amongst the nation's leaders. You got about five guys averaging about 26 to 30 yards a kick return. But they've had six punts return for touchdowns and two kicks. You mentioned it. That That's incredible. Yeah, it's a phenomenal number there. And so uh, clearly they have some uh, highly skilled kids back there. So we have to use some strategy when we're when we're kicking the ball and, and not give them that opportunity. They've scored a lot of points. I know you guys will play in, in any conditions. And as we tape this show, uh, a chilly day for practice today, I know. But uh, forecasters are saying in St. Charles, 65 and sunny on Saturday. So I think our streak of amazing football weather is going to continue. And I'll give you some good news. Right now they're saying wind in St. Charles, only 7 to 10 miles per hour. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take that. And uh, I t if, we ever, if we ever get one of those days, we're prepared because we've had some blustery days out there on the practice field and, and today notwithstanding. How, how are the guys? I mean, you get that victory. It's that sixth win. Got two regular season games left, and they know that the postseason opportunity. You know, they read things. They, I'm sure, your focus with them is one game at a time. But I know they're they're talking to their friends. They're thinking the postseason's a possibility. They got the pep back in the step after the victory. They they do, and and uh, you know, there's some familiarity with players on Lindenwood's mm -hmm. team too. So you know, there's uh, you know that makes it brings a different level of interest to it. Uh, you know, our kids respect what they've done uh, because they know some of the outstanding players that are on their team. So, uh, you know, we expect a great game. It's going to be fun. And by the way, it is a Division II game. Lindenwood counts as a full Division II member on the schedule. So make no mistake, this is not Central going to an NAI school to play. This is Central Missouri beginning a new rivalry with a Division II school in St. Charles now that's joining our league beginning next season. Let's look at the upcoming schedule in the MIAA. It's a big week in the MIAA and also in Super Regional 4, 
but you see it right there. Number three, Northwest goes to number 25, Missouri Western. Ninth ranked, Washburn goes to number two, Pitt State. Pitt's number one in the region this week. Uh, Northwest Missouri is right behind them in the two spot, or excuse me, you got Midwestern State in the two spot. They host West Texas A&M, who's seventh this week, or sixth. And then you've got the three spot, Northwest Missouri. The four spot, Washburn, regionally speaking. So big, big matchups in our region. And then uh, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of people are also watching what's happening in St. Charles. And that's because I think a lot of people around the Division II landscape are curious. How, okay, Central Missouri is a great program under Jim Sabota. How are they gonna respond against Lindenwood? Yeah, I've already had a couple <laughs> co uh, coaches in the league mention that. Uh, of course, we never, you know, looked too far ahead. Uh, we had plenty to worry about uh, prior to this game, but uh, you know, since they are joining the league, uh, there's a lot of curiosity out there, and and uh, you know, we're doing our best to prepare for for this team, and and uh, we'll see what happens. Coach Boda, appreciate the visit as always. We'll talk to you again next week. Sounds good. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll get to know Mule Senior offensive lineman Nate Stoffel. That's next, right here on KMOS TV. Vosis to me means pride in my community, pride in myself, sense of self-esteem, self-worth, passion for our people, Latino contributions to American culture all rolled into one, where Latino voices from all corners of America can be heard. I'm Edward James Olmos, and Vosis is my source for Latino stories on BBS. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. And welcome back to Sports Page here on KMOS TV, the University of Central Missouri's PBS station. In this segment, we shine the student athlete spotlight on Mule Senior Center, Nate Stoffel. I started playing football in seventh grade. I'm from Dubuque, Iowa, and then I, uh, my freshman year I went to Northern Iowa, and then I transferred to Iowa Central, which is JUCO in Fort Dodge, and I uh, ended up getting recruited by Nesbitt, who's the head coach at Truman now. He was the D coordinator here two years ago when I came, and I've just loved it here ever since. I love the campus. It just really drew me in. The people are great, too. My dad played for Iowa State and both my brothers were linebackers and it, it was just kind of the family tradition to play football and I love hitting people, I love football, you know. I love being the leader of the offensive line, especially I love offensive line. The coaching staff and the people that are surrounding this program are changing everything and they're making it just so exciting to come to practice every day just to be part of something that you know is special. You know, that I think the coaches are really bringing that enthusiasm that a football program needs. Being offensive line, you know, you really have that, uh, that unit that uh, everybody, William Freeman and Mark Schroeder and Helis King and Cody Bowles and 
Mike McDaniel, they're all guys that I, you know, look up to, not only just play with them, but, you know, they're the guy that I can depend on, and especially Tommy Corwin and Levance and Cam. They're all guys that, you know, you look to, and it's like, we're going to do this together, and we're going to get it done. We're all friends, no matter what, you know, no matter what position you play, no matter where you're from, no matter what your, your history. We're all, you know, we're all playing football for the Mules, and we love it. I describe my playing style as fast and physical. I try to create extension. I try to keep leverage on people. You know, I'm really trying to fit up on linebackers, trying to work with my guards to really get those combination blocks up to linebackers. I would say probably the coverage that they have to go through to learn. To you know, the quarterback has to be able to read the defense and then and be able to tell in a split second what coverage they're going to be in at the snap of the ball. And where I, all I have to do is basically read the linebackers and call out a combination block for the rest of the offensive line to go off of. And so, in receivers, they really have to learn their routes, who they're playing against, which is the same for us, but it's completely different because different positions, you know, it's just each, each person has their own task to, to complete, to learn, to get ready for that game each week. My individual preparation off the field would have to be film, you know, film study, talking with Coach McClung, just mulling over ideas on, you know, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how can we can exploit them, how can we defend our own weaknesses, and just how can we can run that ball every week. You know, that's what we're we're concentrating on because our pass blocking has been pretty much on point most of the year. Pre-game rituals for me aren't really my thing. I just like to just kind of get in that mindset. I'm, I'm more of a silence type of person. It, it all comes from within. I always believe that motivation is always from within yourself. You shouldn't always go outside to find that motivation. And so I just really like to, to draw on my teammates and the energy inside of a room. I'm consider myself one of the leaders of the offensive line, especially uh, me and Logan Freeman. And you know, Mark and Hewlis have been around for a long time too. And we all just kind of take the leadership. You know, we, we say something when it needs to be said. It's not like we're sitting out there being the, the rah-rah leaders, but if we see something that we don't agree with, we, we're going to say something, and I think that's, that's part of our job on this team. You know, I've been managing football in school for a long time, and it, I just think that it, it's more of a routine now than anything. I think that when people are have too much free time they can abuse it and I, I think that football keeps me in line in my schoolwork especially knowing that I have to get these things done and that I have to be a responsible person if I want to keep competing as a student athlete. My major goal for the rest of the season is just to keep enthusiasm inside of our our team unit and you know make sure people are playing every play as hard as you can because you're only as good as your next play and I think that we just need to win out and we need to keep our confidence and just keep working as hard as we can for the rest of the year. That's all we can do. I think we do, we have a lot, we always have things that we can work on. I think one of the most important things that we can work on is our physicality right now. We can become a more physical team. We can really beat people up. I just don't think that, especially in the run game, I don't think that we've been to the level that we can be at this year. And I think I'm looking forward to these last three to four games to, uh, to really see how we can do on that with my fellow offensive linemen. Mules football, um, relentless, fantastic, great environment to be in, you know, really healthy, enthusiastic place, always upbeat, you know, you'll get yelled at once in a while, but but the enthusiasm comes right back in, you know, it's never, it's a non-stop, it's a next play type of system, and we're always looking forward. Warrensburg is a great city. It really supports, it's the life of this football program. Seeing all those fans out in the crowd every day, you know, is, there's nothing like it. There's, there's nothing that you can compare to people coming to watch you do something that you love and you know that they are loving it just as much. And I just think that when football, football season comes to this town, it's just a whole complete, it changes the environment completely. And we just, we just love football in Missouri. Duke Iowa product has started 26 games as a mule on the offensive line. He was an honorable mention all-conference selection as a sophomore, and he's led the mules to a 25-9 record with two games and hopefully the postseason remaining in this, his senior season. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look at UCM fall sports results from this past week, and we'll visit with Louis Theobald, the head coach of the MIAA champion Jenny soccer team. All of that's on the way when Sports Page continues right after this timeout.
I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. We're getting them ready. I'm ready to read. Ready to try. I'm ready. Estoy listo. Ready for life. I'm ready to speak. It's what we do every day. I'm ready to dream. With the books we provide, the workshops we sponsor. At KMOS TV 6, we're committed to making sure every child in Central Missouri is... Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. I just like the surprise when I turn on the TV and there's an interesting program about history or about gardening or about quilting. So that's really a wonderful source for me. And that's why I like KMOS. It's my source. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warren. Thanks for watching Sports Page here on the Central Missouri Sports Television Network. Coming up next, we'll visit with Louis Theobald, the head coach of the 17-1 Jenny Soccer Squad. But first, let's look back at how the Mules and Jennies performed this past week. And we start with the Jennies bowling team. The Jennies ranked fourth in the nation finished in fifth place at the Greater Ozarks Invitational. That was held last weekend down in Springfield, Missouri. Arkansas State won the event. The seventh ranked Jenny's volleyball squad cruised to a three to nothing win last Friday night as they hosted Missouri Southern at the multi. On Wednesday night, the Jennies swept Truman State three games to none. The Jens are now 22 and four overall. They're 12 and one in the MIAA. They're one game behind Washburn in the league standings and ranked second in the South Central region behind the 26 and one Lady Blues. Allie Huffman was named the MIAA Hitter of the Week for the fourth time this season, and setter Julia Bates was named the MIAA Specialist of the Week for the second time in 2011. The Jenny soccer team successfully defended their 2010 MIAA title with another undefeated run through the MIAA regular season in 2011. The Jens have now won four MIAA titles in the last five seasons and 33 straight conference matches. UCM is 17-1 and, and now they have their sights set on the postseason. Joining us now to talk it over is the MIAA Coach of the Year, Lewis Theobald. Lewis, congratulations. Thanks. Welcome back. Thanks for having me on. Well, first of all, before we look ahead and talk about things, just wrap up, surmise what it means to you for your team to go through another undefeated MIAA regular season. Well, this year we had to because <laughs> Truman, uh, Truman was undefeated on the last day as well. So for us to be able to go with no error again and try to go on the last day knowing you have to win to win the championship away was very difficult. But uh, just really proud of my kids. I thought they... Uh, stay focused all year. We had to overcome some injuries and some setbacks, uh, but they did great. And uh, but we've got our sights now set uh, moving forward. I want to go back five years ago when you took this program over. UCM was amongst the best in the league in Jenny soccer, but certainly not the best, and not won an MIAA title. It made one appearance in the NCAA tournament. And in your now four plus seasons, you've dominated this conference. You've won 33 straight league matches, four out of the last five MIAA championships. To what do you attribute that success, taking over a good program like you did, but taking it to up here like you have? Yeah, it was a really good platform built before I got here to, to kind of continue to grow. So that was a, a good start. And then the, the number one thing is we were just able to get really good players. And uh, we've, we've had a really good 
focus in St. Louis and Kansas City to bring kids in here that are very, very good. They're good students, and uh, without them, we wouldn't be nearly as good. So uh, we've just been really lucky on the recruiting trail that players have bought into what we want to do and how we want to do it, and we've got some of the best players out of those areas. So, um, And we've really kind of you know, really put a, a big emphasis in the Kansas City and St. Louis markets because that's kind of our niche and that's our area. And that's really hurt, I think, the rest of the league in a lot of ways because players that might have went other places have come our way, and we've won a lot of recruiting battles. Well, you've got a balanced team, and that's something that you've had for your entire tenure here at Central Missouri. The All-MIAA selections came out yesterday, folks. Eleven Jennies were named All-MIAA. You can't even play that many at a time. I mean, that, that's impressive to have 11 players named All-MIAA. Alyssa Rhodes, the Player of the Year. Nikki Wisnaski named the Freshman of the Year. By the way, congratulations. You're once again the Coach of the Year. That's impressive. Yeah, to have, you know, we had seven first-teamers, and we had seven last year, and, and Player of the Year last year, and Freshman of the Year, and we've done it again this year, and uh, that is, uh, you know, we told the kids yesterday that it's really nice to be honored, but uh, at some point it becomes a numbers game, and some of our players were disappointed, because mm -hmm. uh, they could have probably also got some awards, and, uh, but there's another year next year, and hopefully they'll earn it that year so uh, really proud of our kids but also some of our other kids were a little bit disappointed because they could have also been rewarded so just really proud of them. I remember when uh, Mules Baseball started to run away and hide with the MIAA the other coaches and ADs changed the rules because they were <laughs> tired of Central Missouri winning it every year and Central Missouri continued to win it basically every year but they, they, they made the margin for error much more slim. Well lo and behold you've started to dominate uh, soccer so they've changed the rules on you. Last year you went 16-0 and to win the MIAA. This year you played 13 MIAA opponents, mm -hmm. but only eight of them counted as MIAA games. So yeah. this year you go 8-0 to win the MIAA. Yeah. Funny how that works. Funny right? how, yeah, I mean, it <laughs> It could have been, if we counted every game, it would have been over going into the last game by for sure. But, uh, you know, we had to go by what was told and we'll play whoever, whenever. But I was really proud of our kids. They, they uh, stayed focused through the whole thing and didn't have a letdown. And, you know, probably, you know, it's one of those, I've never had a player where you, you look at her and say that's a special kid, but without Alyssa Rhodes, we probably aren't undefeated. So Yeah, and it's not just her ability. We're going to see highlights here in a moment. Alyssa has great ability, and she's got a knack for the ball, always mm -hmm. in the right place. But she's a leader, and, and the other thing I'll say about Alyssa, she's just a winner. You can mm -hmm. see it and when she goes out on the basketball floor. You can see it. She's just mm -hmm. a kid that knows how to make winning plays. Yeah, she uh, in, in our run this year, when we needed a goal, she was a part of either she was scoring it or she was setting it up and in, in key moments and and as good as that was she was even better at practice she didn't care who it was she would call out anybody or best friend or, or a freshman whoever it may be that needed some encouragement or a kick in the pants she was that kid for us well in order to win the miaa it was a challenging week you had to go on the road and win a pair you went down to bolivar this is a program that was at the top of the league when you came here uh, still a very capable program you go down to bolivar last week last thursday and you blow them out six to nothing talk about the victory uh, again let's talk about Alyssa. she scores early in a, on a corner kick and it just sets the tone and, and that's something down the stretch we've done our, our shots to goal ratio is so good right now that we're not just limiting teams but we're scoring on our opportunities and uh, that's something we have to keep going but that was uh, a very dominant performance and we were in control of that pretty much the whole way so that brings us to last Saturday you head to Kirksville play an excellent Truman team a fired mm -hmm. up team a very capable team mm -hmm. you go up there it was a big challenge but once again as we look at the highlights here of what turns out to be the MIAA championship match the Jennies come up on top with a solid all-around performance. Yeah, we were, I think we were pretty confident going in. It's the first time I, I think our kids felt like, hey, we've really got to go here and, and play hard and do it. Uh, there's a lot on the line. And they responded pretty well. But Truman played really well. It's a tough place to go. It's just that uh, they're good at home and uh, a lot of they have a lot of success there. But we, we did well and uh, we started early and we got a goal early and that kind of settled us down and uh, really defended well. We limited them to two shots on goal. So uh, that's, that's a good performance. Appreciate our students here at KMOS, our UCM students, coming up to uh, film this drive and taking a three-hour drive up to Kirksville. There you see a nice pass to Alyssa Rhodes, corralled it from uh, Kayla Shane, hammered it past the goalkeeper. Jenny's going top one. Yeah, Great start. Yeah, off a good restart. And Kayla Shane has had a really good year, especially in the back half, and she set that up. And, uh, you know, she um, she's someone we're going to depend on down the stretch. But there's Alyssa getting that goal like, uh, like she does. She's so a winner. You, yeah, you get off to a great start. I think really important on the road to jump yep. out on top. Yeah, and it, it attacks their confidence, and that's what we were talking about in the pregame. We want to go after any confidence they have we want to go after it so uh, yeah it was good one of the things you're seeing here too and a lot of times when you watch one team's highlights you see mainly that team but I notice as we watch these your team's controlling the ball pretty much throughout this match and that's really how it happened yeah we uh, we had a, we had a lot of the ball um, 
At times, Truman had momentum as well, but I, I really felt like we were always in control. The only way we felt we were in trouble was on restarts if we gave up silly fouls and things. So, just we felt like we were in control of our destiny there, and uh, you know, weren't perfect, but we're we're very good. But you kept the pressure on Truman, and I think that's mm -hmm. a big key to your success, the success of your program. Yeah, and they put uh, the other thing with Truman. They seemed very happy to limit us, and uh, they didn't try to create as much going forward. So they put a lot of numbers behind the ball, and it's hard to score when you do that. And, I think it was really just a case of can we stay in it and try to nick one off the central. So we felt good about the tempo of the game and how it was going. It really suited us. One of the things we don't see a whole lot of, we, we can see uh, Brooke Cooley in the background, your goalkeeper, but Truman at, at one point in the first half took five shots in 12 minutes, but uh, Brooke was a, a real key during that stretch and, yeah. and has been all year. Yeah, and you know, it's hard uh, as a goalkeeper, this should have been a goal. Um, hmm. Uh, that was a great counter actually off a corner kick and she should have been a goal, would have made it 2-0. Uh, you know, Brooke, what's hard for Brooke is she's not in the game all the time, she's not seeing lots of shots, but when she has to be ready for those few big moments and she uh, and she's always been there, she's made the big save when she had to, which is hard when you're not seeing constant action. So. Well, we see some good passes from your team, that's a great yeah. corner kick. That's Kayla Shane again, get delivering a great service. So, Your team puts yourself in position to make a lot of goals. I noticed we're seeing a lot of the Lackey sisters. Uh, they, they seem to, uh, you know, the great speed, great hustle. Uh, they're in a lot of plays for you. Yep, and uh, off the line there, Cindy, that, that could great have gone kick. in. Yeah, Cindy uh, on the line doing her job, and I think organization was really good, and we, um, you know, the, the Lackey twins go up and down. You never question their heart, their fitness. They're always ready, and they're excited to play, and um, they play, they wear a lot of different hats for us and play different roles for us, but uh, just special kids. There you see a good pass and uh, Jenny's controlling the ball. And that's Nikki who was freshman of the year in the conference and she um, she's going to be really good here. She's going to score a lot of goals. So it's halftime. You're up one to nothing. Uh, what's the message at the half? Uh, the, the message was just keep doing what we're doing and here's that we were worried about some changes they might make. Uh, we started really well in the second half and I thought that was really important. The first five minutes that I don't think they got in, out of our their half and uh, that set the tone for the second half. and. Uh, uh, we were creating more opportunities than them, and that um, was what was the most important thing. And, and felt like this, if the second goal came, if it came early, we'd probably be pretty comfortable. In well, fact, going into it, I thought if we scored the first one, we would be pretty comfortable. Well, how many shutouts is it this year? It's unbelievable. Yeah, I've only given up five goals all year, so <laughs> that's, that's an 18 that's, matches. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's a. I don't know if we'll match that stat again, but uh, but very good team. That's a that was a great opportunity, and that's Carly Stanley coming through. But again, when you have the type of defense you do, giving up five goals all season long, it's so nice to have when you get up one to nothing and feel like we should win this. Yeah. Well, you think if we score two, they're going to have to score more than half the goals we've been up the rest of the year to win the game. So there's the second goal, and uh, that's probably game over. Yep. Kristen Bright corralling the pass from Becky Lackey in the 71st minute, put the ball in the back of the net. Two nothing was the lead, and that's the final. The Jennies win the MIAA championship with the 2-0 victory over Truman. It was the 33rd straight MIAA victory for the Jennies who rolled through a perfect conference regular season for the second consecutive year. It was 16-0 last year. The rest of the league said, ah, no, they're too good. Let's cut it in half. Okay, so they go 8-0 this year and win it. 17-1 is the overall record. Something else new coming up this year. We're going to have an MIAA tournament. It's at Durwood Stadium on the UMKC campus in the heart of Kansas City. It's a nice facility. It's a new event uh, for the league. Your thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, it's good to have a tournament. Uh, I think it's good for the league. I'm not ex super excited about the location. I wish we were on a, an MIAA campus somewhere. Like or somewhere ours? Like that. Yeah, <laughs> like ours. Uh, but I, you know, we'll play anywhere, anytime, and uh, I think it'll be tough. We're, every team we're going to play has their back against the wall and playing for their life, so that makes it really a challenge for us. And, but it's an, an opportunity to win another championship, and I think that's what motivates our kids right now. Biggest points of emphasis, not necessarily the X's and O's, but points of emphasis with your team as you prepare now for the postseason. It's mentality. So it's about the not knowing. You know, you've got to go and earn a championship. You've got to go and win it. It's not just going to be given to you. So it's trying to instill that. And uh, we didn't use the word defend a champ. We're not defending anything. We're going after something. And we don't. We weren't using that term defend a championship. We were. We didn't want anything to do with defensive mentality in our head. So we were always saying we're. Going after this one, we're not trying to defend. We have last year's. We we were not going to lose that, so we don't need to defend it. But let's go after another one. So that's the mentality we're trying to put in place at practice: is that we're going after something and we're attacking something and we want to win something. So hopefully that message is sinking in. You're 17 and one, but you're ranked third in the region. The top two teams in the region will host a half of the regional. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, a is that extra motivation? B, do you think you can get to the top two? 
I think we can get to two, we have to win the tournament. And uh, that should be motivation for our kids because they have big aspirations this year and uh, any way we can make that road easier, we want to do it. But we'll, we'll be happy if, to be in the tournament, the sure. NCAA, and we'll go and play anyone. But if we can make our road a little bit easier by uh, hosting and being able to play in front of our fans, we'd love to do it. And I know fans are going, how is it even possible that a 17-1 and team could be third? To be fair, and I'm not saying we necessarily agree with where you're at, but to be fair, half of its strength of schedule. One thing you can't help is the fact that you've kind of dominated the regular season in the league. So uh, I don't believe there's a, you know many teams that have winning records in our conference. So that mm -hmm. you know in terms of your strength of schedule, that's why you're at three. Yeah, it's it's uh, a lot of it's to do with strength of schedule and. Uh you know, a lot of it has to do with just those early season matchups that uh, other teams played. So, you know, things we don't control, but uh, once we get in the tournament, strength of schedule doesn't mean too much. It's about winning games, and we'll be prepared for that. And by the way, the uh, NCAA Division II Tournament Selection Show will be on Monday night. You can watch it live online at NCAA.com. I think it's about a 6.30 central time about start. 6.30, yeah. Team will get together, watch it, and then uh, the second season, I guess, in essence, uh, yeah. begins. Yeah, once we get together and we find out what uh, who we're playing and what the draw is, we'll, we'll have a plan, and uh, they're excited. I mean, our kids are excited. That the whole At the beginning of the year, we said, we want to go to the conference tournament knowing we're going to play regardless. We're just playing for seed, and we feel like we're in that position, and uh, now it's you know just an exciting time of the year, and it's just uh, hopefully we can put a run together and, and play for a long time. We want to play in December if we can. Well, next week uh, here on Sports Page, folks, we'll tell you where the Jennies are playing. We'll tell you how they did in the MIAA tournament. We'll have a spotlight on the Jennies selection show with comments from Coach Theobald, his captain Alyssa Rhodes, and other members of the MIAA champion Jennies team. Coach Theobald, congratulations on the league yeah, crown. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you. In just a moment on Sports Page, we'll go back to Ridgeview Elementary School here in Warrensburg as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the UCM Literacy Team. That's coming up next here on KMOS TV. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Create. It inspires me. I love cooking with Ming. Oh, no, 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 no. Jacques Pepin is the man. I knew how to fix a furnace, but now I know the hot spots of Rio. I've turned shacks into castles, and now I can fill them with antiques. And I caught you watching that quilting show. And I'm getting pretty good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. And we, we love, love to, to watch Create. Create. It inspires us. To create with you. KMOS TV is my source for entertainment. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy all of the musical entertainment that KMOS provides for Central Missouri. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live, Countdown to UCM. Stay tuned to KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. Well, the event taking place here today was very exciting for me personally because I started teaching in this district 23 years ago and I actually taught with Carol Hughes. 
and that memorial is very um, touching to me to actually see that from this side as a principal because my number one goal is for every child to leave here literate of course and we do all that we can to inspire a love for literacy and, and becoming a reader and having the athletes come over from the college is so very empowering to the students to get to see that they also read and that literacy has been important in their lives. Um, I'm just very appreciative of all that UCM does for the schools and the uh, opportunity for us to be a part of that in a number of ways. It not only helps us become better teachers, but it, it certainly has an impact on our students and their learning. We started the, the uh, literacy program in uh, 1992 after uh, uh, my first wife Carol passed away. She, she was an elementary uh, speech pathologist, liked working with kids, enjoyed teaching them to read and working with their speech. And so, uh, and she loved the student athletes at the University of Central Missouri. And so I, I thought this would be a good way to, to uh, leave a legacy for her uh, by buying books. Uh, for our student athletes to take in the classrooms and, and to read to the students and uh, we've been going for 20 years. It's been very well received both by the Warrensburg School District but our student athletes really enjoy going to the schools and reading to the kids. I think it's very important. Um, you see those kids at the games and they know you and know who you are so if you can go out and interact with them a little bit better on more of a personal basis then I think it really means a lot to some of the kids that really need that role model in their life and then to other kids they just say it's really cool that we come and hang out with them. So I think it really means a lot, not only to the kids but also to the student athletes as well. So I think it's a great program. I would say almost all of our student athletes, all of our 500 student athletes at, at a different point in time made to go to one or more of the assemblies. Uh, I know Bob Jackson the other day when we were at uh, Ridgeview said that one of our student athletes had gone to every one of them. So uh, I think it just depends on their time schedules and their uh, if they're able to get away uh, from campus w between classes and, and their practice schedules. But I know they really enjoy doing it and, and we really appreciate them doing it. With me there were two other people, Alex Dean and uh, Preston Oaks and we, all three of us went and read in a group together and it, it was a good experience for everyone too. This is actually my third or fourth time doing it so I was the, the veteran of the group so it was, a real, it was a really good time. This is my uh, third time coming here and it's second time this month so I enjoy coming and talking to the kids and stuff like that and it's, uh, it kind of makes you feel important stuff you come up here and everybody kind of looking up to you and stuff and I think it's important for the kids to learn how to read because later on you know you get in college and stuff like that it's a big part of school so it's a huge part of school so I think it's important. Being able to just show them that, that how, reading, how important reading really is because when I was little I didn't really read very much and it, it, you learn you struggle as a get told, especially with college and stuff it's like harder and harder and the kids that were just like read a little bit you know even 10 minutes a day so you just try to encourage them you know more than that just like being good little kids, you know, and just helping their parents and stuff. We try to incorporate, like, us, if they say something about chores in the book or something, we try to tell them, ask them if they do chores at home and stuff. So it's just a fun way to interact with them. I think a day like this is important for our student athletes at UCM to interact with uh, elementary school students, to be able to show them the importance of reading, uh, just to be able to be around them and let them see how much uh, they're looked up to. And so uh, I think the elementary schools also know it's important uh, to be able to get the new books that the Literacy Fund provides. Today was awesome. The uh, kids were so excited to be having company come and they were ecstatic that they got to see Mo and see the athletes and then the book. They totally enjoyed having the UCM athletes read to them. They were so cute. They were just laughing hysterically and say, oh, that's my favorite part. The UCM students were very good to ask them, like, what is your favorite part and what happened next? And some good skills went on. Um, and then afterwards, the children started asking questions of, of the UCM students and what they were going to do after they got through with college and they tied the UCM students tied it in how they were going to use their reading and their education in their future career. 
the students really need to know that there are people out there that use these skills that they are learning. Um, and, and it's not just for reading a recipe or anything, it is for a future career. And the UCM students are, are wonderful role models to come in and, you know, because they're not a, a lot older than our kids. Our kids are six and seven, and they're probably 20. So they can see that, hey, this might be me someday. And the children also wanted to tell what sport they played and, um, so it was really, it was really neat that they, they also wanted to share, like the UCM students shared with them, now they wanted to share what there was important in their life. So it was a very good connection. For the past 20 years, UCM student athletes have visited elementary schools in Warrensburg to promote the importance of reading. The best part is all the books the student-athletes read to the youngsters are selected by the school's librarians and they stay at the schools for students to enjoy for years to come. Those books are purchased through the Carol Hughes Memorial Fund as a way to honor the late wife of UCM Athletic Director Jerry Hughes and Carol's career as a teacher and educator. Over $20,000 worth of books have been purchased over the 20-year history of this outstanding program. Thanks to Principal Ginger Cochran, first grade teachers Mrs. Runke and Mrs. Bond, and all the students and staff at Ridgeview for letting us tag along for the visit. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the Mules and Jennies are competing this weekend as Sports Page rolls on after this. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. The big thing with the KMOS Ready to Learn program isn't just, you know, come watch our shows, but then they want you to turn it off and read a book. My source for quality children's education is KMOS TV. Is your family struggling to organize and finance a college education? Answers to your questions may be just a phone call away during KMOS Live Countdown to UCM. During this program, individuals dealing with the transition from high school to higher education can ask experts about college financial aid, scholarships, and admissions. The path to college is not always clear, so let KMOS be your guide. Watch KMOS Live, Countdown to UCM. And for the last time this week, welcome back to the UCM Sports Page. Before we wrap up another show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to go to follow the Mules and Jennies. The Mules football team will travel to St. Charles Saturday to take on the Lindenwood Lions. The Mules are 6-3, Lindenwood is 7-2. The Lions will join the MIAA next season. They count as a D2 game this year. They've already got a win over Northern Colorado and Texas A&M Kingsville. The Lions are dubbing this as one of the biggest games in school history, so you know they'll be ready to play. Ought to be a really good game. Kickoff Saturday set for 1.30 at Hunter Stadium in St. Charles. We'll have the broadcast on Coco, the bar, and WarnsburgRadio.com beginning at 12.10. We'll join you right around kickoff on 90.9 The Bridge. Before the game, all UCM alumni and friends invited to a pregame tailgate beginning at noon northeast of Hunter Stadium near Harmon Hall. For $10, you can enjoy food and soda, or you can bring your own food and enjoy the party. 
It's a big week in the MIAA. Third ranked Northwest Missouri heads to 25th ranked Missouri Western. And ninth ranked Washburn is at number two ranked Pittsburgh State. The Gorillas are one game up in the league standings on Washburn and Northwest. In other MIAA games this week, Southern's at Fort Hayes, Emporia's at SBU, and Lincoln is at Truman State. 7th ranked Jenny's volleyball team heads to St. Joe to take on Missouri Western Friday night at 7. Saturday, the Jens return home. They'll host Northwest Missouri. Note that's a 6.30 first serve on Saturday night at the Multi. That's UCM faculty and staff night with all UCM faculty and staff admitted free. Next Tuesday, the Jens will visit Emporia State for a 7 p.m. match. The 8th ranked Jenny's soccer team is the number one seed in the MIAA tournament this weekend at Durwood Soccer Stadium on the UMKC campus. Friday at 4, the Jens will face the winner of number 4 Northwest and number 5 Emporia State. The championship game of the MIAA tournament scheduled for 1 o'clock on Sunday. And then the NCAA will announce the Division II National Tournament field Monday evening at 6.30 at NCAA.com. The MIAA champion Mules Cross Country team will defend their regional title from a year ago. And the Jennies will look for a top level showing as well at the South Central Regional. That's this Saturday in Wichita Falls, Texas. The teams are trying to advance to the national championships in Spokane, Washington. And the Mules basketball team will be in Columbia Monday night to take on the 25th ranked Missouri Tigers in an exhibition contest at Mizzou Arena. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. and you can listen to the game on 1450 AM, 98.5 FM, 90.9 FM and warrensburgradio.com. There will be a UCM Alumni and Friends reception on Monday at 5 in Columbia at the Sport Zone in the Holiday Inn Select just off of I-70. If you'd like Mules Mizzou tickets, you can get them by calling one 800 Cat paws. And it's time now for our weekly sports page trivia question. Each week we give you a chance to win a prize from UCM Athletics. And last week we asked you, what is the Jenny's volleyball team ranked this week in the top 25? The correct answer is seventh in NCAA Division II. Daniel emailed us first, so he wins a UCM Athletics t-shirt. This week our question is, Mules basketball associate head coach Brad Luce's father is the athletic director and head basketball coach at what? Division I school. If you know the answer and you want a chance to win a prize, send it to the address on your screen or email it to sportspage at kmos.org. And with that, we wrap up another edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page. As always, we hope you enjoyed the show. We invite you to tune in again next Thursday night at 7 and Saturday at 5 to keep up with the UCM Mules and Jennies. Also, during the week, we'll have the show on our website, ucmo.edu forward slash athletics. You can find us on Facebook by searching for sports page, one word, and you can follow us on Twitter at UCM Mules. Again, all one word. We've got you covered in the social media realm, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever the case may be, you can follow us right here at UCM and sports page. Until next time for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching sports page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Support for Sports Page is provided by Parker Supermarket and Pharmacy in Warrensburg. Parker's works hard to supply grocery staples and spices to cook Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, and Thai cuisine. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience for everyone. By First Central Bank, full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. And by Union Station. Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs, campus-compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus, on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics.